vision and En-ROADS. How to run a game, a workshop, a demo, and a way to keep people truly engaged and looking for possibilities for action and not giving in to resignation, despair, denial, unfettered optimism. Keep people engaged and working hard. Now we're gonna use some of the insights from the rubber band video with an essay by Dana Meadows. So if you haven't watched that, watch that and then watch this one. It'll make a lot more sense. I've been running workshops and games with our model C roads and N roads for 13 years now. And I have this experience of seeing in people's faces and in their words, some of the modes of checking out, not engaging, or just not being focused on moving forward towards effective action over and over. And here's what it looks like and what to do about it. One of them is, as Dana described, this kind of looking at the vision with this kind of unfettered, uh, irrational optimism about where things are headed. Often it shows up as a belief in silver bullets. If we just grow trees, or I'll eat vegetarian, or there's gonna be this technology that comes in and solves this problem kind of magically. When that comes up, of course, En-ROADS is so set up to help you because you can show how so many silver bullets aren't actually silver bullets. Focus there. The second mode when you have people who are looking at the vision, but it's untethered. It's untethered to a current reality. That is a denial. Basically, I'm going to have the world I want because there isn't really a problem. That shows up as sometimes skepticism about climate science or just it's not a problem. Eh, it won't be that big a deal. Focus on the baseline story. Tell what's happening with coal, oil, and gas and concentrations, temperature, air quality, sea level rise, ocean acidification, and all the other impacts that in the model, but also outside of the model, through climate science, you can bring to bear on showing why, no, things are not headed in a direction that are good. The third mode isn't about the rubber band up here, but it's down at the bottom, where people are so focused on the tragedy and horror of the current reality that they give in to resignation, and despair. You can just see it on people's faces sometimes. So what do we do? The whole game and workshop is built to help people slowly, steadily build a concrete grounded vision of a pathway to well below two degrees. You're going to help them discover it, fall in love with that scenario, talk about it, Take 60 seconds of silence even to think about what they would love about being part of a world that was on track to making that happen. Have them write it down in a notebook, turn to the person next to them and tell them about it. Write into your poll, your polling software, share with the world what they want to see. Ask them to go share it on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, their vision of where things could go into the future, rebuild that sense of possibility. The environmental movement has focused so much on problems. Can we sh build a shared vision of where things could head? That's what the game and workshop is for. And that's how you help somebody who's here restore their vision for the future. When it's really working and you have a group that seems to be holding the tension, as Dana Meadows wrote, in her essay, holding the tension between what they really want and what is. You have a group of people who are able to be okay together with the idea that we have an existential threat that we may or may not be solving, that we will face increasingly large opposition if we gain any kind of progress going into the future. And at the same time, there's so much that we want in the world how to have people be okay with that. First, don't fix the feelings that come up. Don't cheer people up. Help people just be with the tension. Be with holding that tension. 
It's very challenging, but you can do it. Have people talk about their feelings, give voice to them, but don't try to fix them. Often as you're holding the space for people to be okay with that tension, the emotional reactions people will have will show up as skepticism about the model, skepticism about climate science or other questions that come up. Be okay with realizing that sometimes something deeper is going on for someone as they ask you some question about a parameter in the model. It can be challenging, but you're going to have to do it as the representative of the simulator. The other thing that I tend to do that you should consider is to find the moments when you can build the evidence that there is hope, that the current reality is actually moving up towards the vision that we have. Sometimes the wind and solar graphs can be helpful, showing the amazing growth in wind and solar, telling stories of what's been going on in your community or in the country of some recent news about some sort of effective climate action, or even telling stories in the past about how humans have addressed really big societal challenges, apartheid in South Africa, peace in Northern Ireland, the Berlin Wall, ending the slave trade, the civil rights movement in the United States, sometimes telling these stories of other large changes can really help. The other thing I tend to end with is I'll say, it's not gonna be easy, it's going to be worth it. It's not gonna be easy to hold that tension. It's going to be worth it to see the current reality get better and better. All right, vision and end roads helping people stay engaged and see what they want, be honest about what is, and use that to drive action. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be worth it. Go get them.